Hi, I'm James, I'm with TVS Pro, and today we're talking Ronins. We wanted to produce this video a while back, but we got it in mid-August, just about like everybody else, and we sold out of them so quick and couldn't keep them in stock long enough to have a video. So we finally got one. This is our rental unit. It is available through TVS Pro. Um, let's dive in. Uh, first off, looking at this thing, it's very well built. Uh, I think they actually tried to do a little bit of a knockoff from HPRC. They've got same red handles like HPRC has, uh, very similar in design. Um, all in all, it's a good well-built case. If you wanted to buy the case separately, the case is 500 and the foam on the inside is like 250, maybe 300 bucks. So the case alone is 800 bucks. Uh, so they're technically selling you some hardware for about $2,200. Uh, any competitor like this in the movies and city cams and whatever, you're, you're eight to 15 grand to have the same type of capabilities and weight capacity for the Ronin. So it really is a game changing product. Um, there were two cases for the Ronin that came out with different clips. The first one that we saw that came out had very similar clips like HPRC. These ones have a lock, you just gotta press it down before it actually will release. Same way going down, you can't push on it. You gotta pinch it and then it'll close. So just FYI. Um, as we open it up, it's just some cool red foam. It's really, it's really a, appealing uh, to the eye. Uh, you've got one, two, three, four spots for batteries. It comes with one. And if you've got the camera, whatever it is that you're using, balanced right on the Ronin, you could get up to four hours. So even if you just had two batteries on this, you've got a full day shoot and they charge really fast. Comes with a charger uh, under an hour. You're 45 minutes. If you're familiar with the Phantom series from DJI, it's about the same time to charge it as the Phantom One. So it's, it's really slick and easy. Since we're talking about the battery, um, very similar to the Phantom 2 series, if you're familiar with those, where the button will tell you the battery life, and it is also the trigger of the power button to power this on. Make sure that whenever you are connecting, if by chance this does get powered, because you can't power this outside of it being plugged into something, just make sure it is powered off, that there's no visible lights before you actually plug it into the port on the Ronin. Okay, um, and actually, before I take anything apart, I'm gonna show you, a lot of people don't know this, but if you take this foam out, there's actually some cool instructions. Um, really nice sticker, printed really well, uh, very clear and visible with wording and a diagram to show you how everything fits in the case. It's pretty cool, okay? So just as a side note, um, I'll take uh, this guy out here. This top portion, it consists of two different layers of foam. I'll take this guy out first. Um, because we need to get the stand out. So I'm actually going to rest this over here so we can get the stand out and we'll, we'll start there. Uh, so this is the stand. It's pretty cool. There is a uh, lock here. This can untwist and this will actually fit any C stand. Uh, so you uh, can have it up on a C stand where it's at eye level. Could make it easier to balance a camera, whatever it is that you've got on there. Um, the legs, simply you just pull it out and it'll lock. Okay, so now that I've got all of my arms and legs fully extended, I'm gonna cinch that down and we're gonna need the arm. Now, the radio is on top of the handle. This is one of our rental units. Typically, when you receive the Ronin, these stickers won't be here. We've added these on just to show what uh, each of these switches do because this is our rental unit. But again, this is something that we've added. Uh, but you have to remove the radio in order to get this handle out. Uh, when it comes to you, these are kind of loose um, because that's the way it fits into the foam. So once it's out uh, and these are just hanging, you can, on the back here, there's just some quick tight screws, hand screws. And you do that on both of them here. So now I've got some good sturdy handles. This piece will just rest on top of those arms like that. Now I am actually ready for the main hardware. 
when it comes to you, it'll actually have some Velcro straps uh, that are around the stand as well as around some of these arms. It's just to help things from shifting around when it's in its case. So this is actually pretty slick. Uh, it's got some good weight to it. You can tell it's not cheesy. It's built really well. It's good sturdy aluminum. It's all, I mean, it kind of some of these servos here in the end, they really remind me of like an iPhone. Uh, it's got some polished cut edges, machined aluminum edges. Uh, it's pretty cool that way. Uh, there is a lock here that you just press down, kind of like a tripod lock, and it will just rotate or slide onto this section of the arm. So as I slide this on, I'm just going to push that lock down. And there it locks. And then there is a hand screw, just like these other handles, that I'm going to tighten down so that it locks it into place. And there's my, there's my Ronin right there. Uh, it's out of balance right now, of course, because it doesn't have a camera. Uh, next thing you can do is actually add the battery. So I'll take this battery out. Uh, the port is on this back side, and these are just some tightening screws. So that'll fit onto the back. You stick the locks in first, and then the whole thing just slides down. Once it's on there, tighten those screws down. When you're ready to release it for charging or whatnot, loosen those screws, and then there is a little lever on the bottom that if you just push up on it, it releases the battery uh, quite easy. But once you've got it in there, Tighten that down, good and tight. Um, next thing we're going to talk about is balancing a camera. So some of the other stuff that it it comes with these are quick. Uh, these are quick release. If you just untighten this guy here, slide it down, and this opens up. These go up on this top bar. Uh, generally, monitors. Uh, you could attach some microphones onto there. And since we're talking about that, I would, if you're using a shotgun mic or whatnot, I would recommend taking any of those attachments off the camera, as uh, what we found out. Uh, harder to balance it with that stuff on, I'd put it up on top. Just a little quick tip there for you. Um, I'm going to balance this with a C100, and this is a 16 to 35 millimeter lens. Um, just kind of a, a review for you guys. We have had some trouble with some of the telephoto lenses, um, longer lenses. So 16 to 35 works great. Uh, there's a popular 70 to 200. We've had problems with that. Can't quite figure out why it won't balance. Granted, though, we are using that lens on an FS700. Now, the FS700 is not on DJI's list of recommended cameras for the Ronin. We have balanced it, though. Uh, with a great lens and hooked it up to the light bridge and it's working fine. Uh, so if you've got questions about the FS700 and mounting it onto the Ronin, we figured out how we've got some 90 degree HDMI adapters to go into the back of that port, that HDMI port on the FS700 and it's working great. So I know it's not on the recommended list of cameras or compatibility, we've got it figured out. So give us a call, talk to us, happy to work with you. Um, some of the other stuff that are in here, it's got a cool, it's almost like a sunglass, sunglass bag. It's got a lens support adapter in there, and then there are multiple sizes of screws for the bottom of your camera, and some pretty cool colored Allen wrenches as well. Uh, I've got the plate already attached to the bottom of the C100, because we're going to mount that and then we're also going to, I'm just using some industrial strength Velcro. This is the light bridge and the little cable that connects from the light bridge port to the light bridge itself. Some of the Ronin's DJI kind of messed up. Some of them don't have this cable and this cable doesn't come with the light bridge either. We've got some, our DJI rent sent us some, they know that they goofed. Uh, so if you've got some questions, uh, we've got some available for you if you need them. So I'm actually gonna mount this first Make sure that you've got uh, your ports, uh, main ports on the back, and your antenna's kind of going out this way. So I've already got some Velcro attached to this guy, and I'm just going to attach it there. Rig everything up. 
what we found is rig everything up on your camera the way you're going to have it before you actually start mounting it. Take off your cap too, uh, especially this far out, it uh, has some problems with it. Okay. The actually before I do that, I'm going to release this. This is your, that's that side plate. That's basically the lock that cinches it down. So you want to undo that. And then there is a button lock right there. So to slide your camera on, loosen that one lever on that side, and slide your camera on there. And I'm going to cinch that down right now. Okay. So right off the top here, you can tell now that I've got the camera on here, it's out of whack, right? It's not balanced at all. There are four different levels of balancing this, and you need to do them in this order. Uh, first is lens support. So that same lever that I used uh, to release it, that when I pull that out, that's how I'm going to adjust my forward and aft movement of my camera. You need to balance that out so that it is, and that's actually pretty good right there, um, so that's not too lens heavy or tail heavy. The next one that you'll need to do are these adjustments here. Again, these are all quick release hand screws. Uh, this is going to adjust as I loosen this now, I can slide this back and forth. So first lens support, next is my side to side and that's going to balance the roll movement of the Ronin. Once I've got that and I cinch that down, the next movement is the vertical movement here. There's a hand, there's a quick release there and another one here and there are markings. It's really kind of cool. They've printed all kinds of measurements and markings uh, all on here so that you can match up each side. Uh, this is going to help with uh, the overall balance of everything and sometimes you have to mess with the lens once you adjust it up and down. So I'm going to do that. And <laughs> Okay, I've got it all balanced now, uh, at least this lower portion here. Um, when it's balanced, you should be able to put this in any position that you need to and it'll stay. So I can rotate this camera, let it go, and it's going to stay. So I, I know that this thing is balanced. Now, if there's some movement, that's okay. We found that that's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is pretty darn perfect. Uh, I'm gonna, we'll highlight the app in just a little bit. Basically, there are, there's pan, roll, and tilt. And on the app, it'll show you power levels. As long, DJI says that give or take, plus or minus 10, it'll work. But the closer you have those numbers to zero, the closer you're actually going to get four hours out of the battery. Um, I've never had them where it's completely zero. I've gotten it pretty close where I've had negative one, negative two, and a zero or something like that. Uh, but as long as, for the most part, you can tilt this and put it in a position and it stays, I mean, th this is pretty flawless. So now we need to balance the pan. And to do that, when you've got the stand up like this, the easiest way is to just lift up one side and let it tilt. So now it rotated that way, so I know it is really tail heavy on the battery side. So there are two more quick release here. I move those and now I've got two different screws here. I move them together and it's going to need to come forward because the battery is too heavy. So as I slide those forward and I, and I can tell the way it's balancing, I need to go back just a little bit. Little adjustments. Little adjustments make all the difference in the world. Uh, so now we'll try that again. We'll lift this side up. Uh, it's still a little, so I need to come forward some more. Uh, it's just still a little bit more. If you're familiar with any of the Manfrotto tripods, these are kind of like a wrench. You can pull them out and then twist it back and it doesn't do anything. And then when they snap back in, now you can continue to adjust it. I'm at about three and a half right there. So we'll center all this stuff. Ooh, we're getting close. Perfect. If I lift up this other side too, still no movement. Okay, so now my pan is totally adjusted. Now that I've got that, I'm gonna tighten those down. So now it is completely 
uh, it's completely balanced. And I've got my lens cap off, I've got no other external attachments, and my light bridge is there. As a side note, you should hook up the HDMI cable from the camera and into the light bridge before you do the balancing. Uh, I've done this balance without that HDMI cable. Once I add that on there, it's going to throw it all off. But for show purposes, there it is right there. Uh, and we're going to show you here along. We're going to show you actually running around with this, and we'll show you some footage from the light bridge as well. Yeah.